Welcome back, everyone, to E Boogie Studios. Imagine yourself in 1953, and you don't have a television just yet, and you're listening to a radio broadcast from a series called Suspense. Hope you enjoy. Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Joseph Cotton in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story based on fact, an American legend of love and death, as we recreate the tragic history of Tom Dooley. Our star, Mr. Joseph Cotton. Hey, Wilcox, where are you rushing like a local coyote? Hi, Sheriff. Well, I've got a date to tell folks that for the swellest, sweetest, and smoothest performance money can buy, you just can't beat those world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Well, even an ignorant critter like me knows that. Sure, Sheriff. And I'll bet you also know that if your present spark plugs aren't functioning properly, your car won't give you the performance it should. Have those spark plugs checked by your Autolite spark plug dealer, the expert in cleaning and adjustment. And if replacements are needed, he'll recommend ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, either standard or resistor type. Yep. Why, they're smoother than Grandma's flapjacks. Right you are. So see your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer. To quickly locate him, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Tom Dooley. Starring Mr. Joseph Cotton, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Bow down your head, Tom Dooley. Bow down your head and cry. Bow down your head, Tom Dooley. You know you're bound to die. Ho, ho! You wait here, Noah. You're a fool, Tom. You oughtn't to do it. You're going to stop me, cousin. Just watch the horses. Open! Yes? What? You be Paul Cabot. Yes, I'm Cabot. What? Oh! Now, get up. Maybe I ain't going to kill you. I don't know. Get up! Let's go, cousin. Uh, How do I look, cousin? Dirty? Uh, She won't mind. She hears what you just did. She won't mind. Don't you need you anymore, Noah. Go home. I'm waiting. (laughs) <laughs> You're liable to wait right long. Laura. Laura. Hello, Tom. Ah, oh, darling. Still a darling. Pretty as a... Oh, let go of me. You better come in. <laughs> I better... Well, my darling. I thought you were dead, Tom. Dead they were, piled high. But not Tom Dooley. Months ago, after Gettysburg, when the men came drifting back home, nobody had seen you, Tom. Some said they heard you were dead. Died early at Manassas. What's the talking for, Laura? What's all this talking for? Uh, Don't, Tom. Pretty mouth. Wasting on top. But don't! Teasing and trembling in the way I remember. I'm sorry, Tom. Whatever you do after now, Laura, don't hit no more. Gentle me. You do that now. Four years you've been away, Tom, do I'm back now. You're back. And I thought you were dead. Over a year now. 
And I grieve for you like I had to do. And a man came along and gentled you like I heard he did. Yes. Paul Cabot. I love him. That's the way things are now. A doctor. A Yankee. The war's done, Tom Dooley. And the killing's done. And the hate's done. And what's happened to the loving, Laura? Yours to me. Over, Tom. There was grieving, like I told you, and it's over. And I love a Yankee doctor named Paul Cabot. Love him. Come on, I'll take you to him. You what? Where he's laying on the floor. I think it was whimpering when I left him like a sugar candy baby. Come on, I'll show you. Get out of here. Maybe I will, but I don't know that yet. First, I want you to remember something, Laura. Get out. I want you to remember you hanging on my horse and wailing the tears on you four years ago when I rode out to join with Beb Vance and his cavalry. You remember, Laura? I agree. Tears on you. That was your grieving. Listen to mine. The fighting and the blood and the screaming and bull running Manassas and the Yankees. Killing them and they always come in. Virginia and Pennsylvania and the killing and leaving your own blood every place you go. Tom. But you go because as long as you're going, you're coming back. Back here to the Smokies. Back here to Laura Foster. That pretty mouth. Laura. 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 No, no, I don't love you no more, Tom. I don't love you. You're going to love me. You remember how but you... Tom, Tom, not you! You ain't worth those four years. No. On account of you couldn't wait for your man. You better go, cousin. Get out of here, Noah. You're my blood cousin, and I'm holding a gun on you. And I'm saying you've got to go. I kill you where you stand, Tom. No matter blame me. I would, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I think you would. Good night, Laura. Still know how to play a tune on a fiddle, don't you, Tom? Sure do. Nobody plays like you play, Tom. Oh, thank you, Jess. Oh, missed you here on the stove. Why, all of us thought you thought were... Thought I was dead. What kept you, Tom? All of us come back since we hear General Lee surrendering. What happened to you? I had never seen Pennsylvania. Walked around it. With a gal? Just walked. You walk too slow, Tom. <laughs> you walk a lot too slow. Laura Foster passed you right by. Yeah, I heard. Tell me she's learning how to read and write. I, I heard that, too. Doctor. Yankee. War's over, Jess. Fighting, hating. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I heard you almost killed a Yankee, Doctor, Tom. You heard it, so I guess I did. <laughs> hey, Noah... What you want, Jess? Pass that jug over here. Give your cousin a drink. I ain't drinking no more, Jess. Hey, now. Recent you ain't doing a lot of things. Well, you changed, Tom. I reckon I have. You gonna learn how to read and write? Doctor say he can teach anybody who wants to learn. Here it is how you can learn a lot from that doctor. Stop it, Jess. Those Yankees are smart fellas. Reckon that's why they won the war. Won everything, those Yankees. You heat up my cousin, your tongue's gonna be real cold, Jess. Oh, be it now? What are you gonna say about that, Tom? Keep talking. I don't mind. All I can say is my gal start cheeking with somebody else. Hi, Yankee. Hello. What are you on? I've got a list here. I need some groceries. We just been talking about you. Me, Zach, Herman, Josh. All of us. Noah Dooley. His cousin Tom, too. Here's the list. You read it to me, Doctor. I ain't got the lining. Sack of potatoes? Like I said, we've been talking. Wondering. Sack of sugar? Wondering. You like North Carolina Yankee? Carolina Knights? Green beans and flour. How about North Carolina women? Pretty, ain't they? Soft. Wait on him, Jess. And Laura's prettiest of them all, ain't she? Wait on him. Ain't she? 
Tom Dooley here used to think so. Mad wants to buy something, shopkeeper. Sell it to him. I seen you walking, Yankee, trying to get yourself lost with Laura. Jess. Yeah, what do you want, Tom? Uh, Why'd you knock him down, Mr. Dooley? Makes up for things. I'm apologizing. I want to shake your hand. I'd be pleased. It's all right about the other night. I've forgotten about it. I want to be your friend. That's what you are right now, Mr. Cabot. I want to tell you this. What? Laura loves you, and that's all right. We're getting married, Mr. Dooley. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying I hope you'll be very happy. Laura will be very glad to hear that. Mr. Dooley. Yes? Laura says you play the fiddle. I hear you're having a betrothal party tomorrow night. Yes, that's right. Well, I'll play the fiddle for you. For you and Laura. It's the black, black heart within you, a scheming for a life, saying you'd play the fiddle while feeling along your knife. Come here a minute. Yeah, what, what you want, Tom? Spell me on my fiddle a little bit, Noah. Sure. Man, I bet you're tired. Fiddling two hours out letting up. Spell me, cousin. Take fiddle. <laughs> Where you going, Tom? Just play the fiddle pretty, cousin. Don't worry about me. Laura. Oh. I didn't mean to frighten you, Laura. Oh, uh, that's all right. Noah's playing me my fiddle. I saw you come out here. I I wanted to say something to you. Tom. Yes. I'm glad. I wanted to talk to you, too. Paul told me what you did. They teased him and called him Yankee. And you... Oh, that's all right. And I've been hearing other things, Tom. What? How you're different... How you ease down and not so wild so much no more. I'm glad, Tom. But it don't make no difference to you, does it, Laura? How I feel, you mean? No. Why are you out here by yourself? Oh, be- because I'm so happy, Tom. Because I danced a lot and because my heart's pounding so much. Because Paul's in there and when I look at him... I know, Laura. Laura. Yes? Walk with me. That wouldn't be right, Tom. Things I've got to tell you. It wouldn't be right to listen, Tom. Just a favor I'm asking. I'm pleading. I changed, you heard that. Little walk, Laura. A little walk. Yes. And my heart will settle down. You remember we used to come this way? No talk of that, Tom. I remember we used to... I'm going to... back. No, 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 uh... Why is that girl walking with him, knowing Tom. that Tom is up to no good? Come Tom, on. you'll find you a girl. There's no bitterness now, is there, Tom? Tom. The way that water runs from the top of the mountains to who knows where. You'll find you a girl and you'll be happy. A man like me, Laura. Tom, why the knife? Because a man like me never be happy. You the cause, Laura. <laughs> you the cause. Oh, oh, oh. Can't believe that just happened. Uh, I'll take the fiddle now, Noah. Uh, here you are. Oh, you feel better, Tom? I feel a lot better. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Joseph Cotton in Tom Dooley. 
Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, and I have here as our special guest, Lieutenant Colonel Sherman D. Cosgrove of the United States Army. Colonel Cosgrove, I understand that the Army has special relief funds that are made available to officers and enlisted personnel and their families in time of distress. We do, Mr. Wilcox. It's administered by the Army Emergency Relief in Washington. Now, where do these funds come from, Colonel Cosgrove? The money comes from voluntary contributions by the men and women in the services and from proceeds of a very few special outside events approved by the officers in charge of these three relief organizations. That's the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. One of these events, by the way, is the supper party and reception to be given by the Autolite family at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City on April 7th. Well, tell me, how are these funds made available to those in distress? After thorough investigation... Allocation of funds is handled by chaplains under the supervision of their commanding officers. It must require a huge sum of money to take care of all the needs that develop over a period of a year. It surely does, Mr. Wilcox. Since its incorporation in February 1942, Army Emergency Relief alone has dispersed over $24 million in rendering financial assistance to over 250,000 members of the Army and their families. Well, thank you very much, Colonel Cosgrove. Tonight, we have been privileged to have as our guest Colonel Sherman D. Cosgrove, who has brought you a special message on behalf of the Armed Services Emergency Relief Funds. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Joseph Cotton in Elliot Lewis's production of Tom Dooley, based on fact and well calculated to keep you in suspense. Tom Dooley, bow down your head and cry. You killed poor Laura Foster. You know you're bound to die. Hello, Mr. Dooley. Nice party you got going, Mr. Cabin. Talk to you for a minute? Sure. Hey, Noah, spell me again, will you? Yeah, sure, Tom. What can I do for you? Have you seen Laura? Oh, a while ago when I was fiddling. My, she looks pretty tonight. There's something else I got to tell you. Yes? You Yankees know how to give parties, too. How long ago did you see Laura? Oh, like I told you when I was... How long ago was that? Half an uh, hour, maybe. Why, what's the matter? Well, she's not here. Well, outside, maybe. Not that I could find. Well, maybe you Would could. Would you come help me look for her? Oh, she don't need looking for her. She'll be around. Enjoy yourself, Mr. Dooley. I'll do that, Mr. Kaplan. Aaron? Uh, yes, Paul. Seen Laura? Uh, I saw her go outside a while back. I haven't seen her since. Get a few of the boys. Let's go outside and look for her. Sure. Hey, Betty Lou, come on. Give me a dance. Tom, wake up. Hmm? Come on, Tom, come on. Wake up. Get on your feet. Why, why are you waking me, cousin? You listen to me. Why are you waking me when it's still black outside? You killed Laura, Tom. What? They found Laura snagged on a rock right under the North Falls. She was stabbed. What are you saying, though? I'm saying it and everybody else is saying it. Saying what? You put a knife to Laura. Oh, you saw me dancing, Noah. Everybody saw me dancing. People seen you go outside, too. They're coming after you, Tom. Saying I killed her? Knowing it. Knowing you the only person had reason. But I... You talking I, and they're coming after you. They're going to hang you, cousin. They're going to hang you for sure. You killed her, didn't you? You got to help me. You put on all the gentle and there was nothing but black inside you. You my cousin. And I'm your cousin and you got to help me. Kill her. Pretty thing like Laura. You blood kin to me, Noah, and you're going to help me. You're going to do what I tell you. No, I'm not, Tom. I'm doing nothing to help you're you. You're talking like a man who don't care if you die. You're going to wait till I get out of this cabin, till I get on your horse and start riding to a Tennessee. And you're going to wait some more. Till you hear them coming, then you're going to get on my horse and wear my hat, and you're going to start riding the other direction. 
When you leave, I got the length of this room to decide whether to shoot you in the back. Now you get going. morning, Tom Dooley galloped west, and when the sun was gone, he laid him down to rest. Who's there? Who's, who's there? I see you. I'm going to shoot. It's my friend Selman, you might see. Me, you can't see at all, because I'm at your back. Now, you just stand where you're standing. What, what do you, you want? You stand where you're standing, and you're going to feel something. Feel it? My gun to your back. All right, Selman, take his gun. Give it to him, give it to him. That's it. You come out too, George. You too, Dawson. I don't know you, man. Who? Yankees. What do you want me for? Well, we don't know, Johnny Reb. We just come down here on a visit. You want my money, that's what. Now, there's a thought. Uh, where's your money, Reb? I got none. Oh, you got none. You got none. Oh. Oh. Where you come from, Reb? From, from back there. Ah, you still wearing the rebel jacket. Uh, don't you know the war's over? The war's over, and you still... Enjoying it, uh-huh. Living off the fat of southern land. Won a war, we did, Reb, and we're enjoying it. I, I got no quarrel with you now, Yank, Once just, just like you that. had a quarrel. Where'd you fight, Reb? Manassas. Get his Manassas. Now, uh, you take a look at the wood I wear for a leg, Reb. I changed him at Manassas. A Reb bullet. You shoot that bullet? Maybe I did. Ah, oh, you got us a brave one, Selman. Make him cry a little bit. Go. Oh. Get up, Reb. Get up. You uh, crying? You smiling? Can't tell with that face uh, Selman made for you. Now, now, let me look real close. Why, you ain't doing nothing at all. Just, uh, just uh, let me get out of here. Night's entertainment. That's what we're looking for, Reb. And you don't do nothing. Laugh, cry, nothing. Ah, you dance, I bet. You Rebs. I tell you what. You dance for us. Uh, Dawson, get us a rope. Oh, you've got no cause to hang me. For dancing purposes. You do us a do si do on the air from that tree over there. Uh, uh, thank you kindly, uh, Dawson. No, no cause at all. Don't like to dance? Then what you gonna do for us, Reb? I know a thing. Sing us a tune. Uh, nice Yankee tune. Reb, uh, you know one? Sure you do. I'll help you, Reb. Yankee doodle, keep it up. Sing. Let him alone. Who are you? A Yankee. Like you. Isn't that right, Tom? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Cabot. A Yankee, gentlemen. Who says with this rifle that the hating's over. Now leave this man alone and get out. All right. All right, men. Get. Oh, oh Mr. Cabot. <laughs> they were going to kill me. I'm, I'm grateful. Grateful? For saving your life? Mr. Cabot. You're going back right where you came from, Tom Dooley. No, I... To where you killed Laura. Walk ahead of me, Tom Dooley, or I'll shoot you where you stand. Doctor. Yankee, doctor. Who's going to see that you die legal, Tom Dooley? <laughs> Heart's ready for you, Tom. Time for hanging. Tom. The 
That scrub oak tree. Get up on your horse, Tom. Rope tight to the branch up there. Yeah, real tight. Mr. Cabot, reckon you want to fit the noose to Tom's neck? Yes. Lean down, Tom Dooley. All right, it's done. You got anything to say, Tom, before we slap your horse out from under you? Fall down your head, Tom Dooley. Fall down your head and cry. Goodbye, Tom. May your soul rest in peace. You killed poor Laura Foster. You know you're bound to die. Get! Suspense. Presented by Autolite, tonight's star, Mr. Joseph Cotton. Suspense has again been brought to you by Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. That's why during these early months of 1953, the the Autolite family has again saluted the leading manufacturers who install Autolite products as original equipment. Next week, as a climax to this salute series, our show will originate from the Easter Parade of Stars auto show in the Grand Ballroom of New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Our story will be a dramatization of the first and only round-the-world auto race ever held. Our star will be Van Johnson. So be sure to be with us next week for the auto race that stirred the world. Next week, a story based on fact as we recreate the first international automobile race. The time, 1908. The story, Around the World. Our star, Mr. Van Johnson. That's next week on... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Tom Dooley was written for Suspense by Martin Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in tonight's cast were Sammy Hill, William Conrad, Joseph Kearns, and Bill Bissell. The singer was Harry Stanton. Joseph Cotton may currently be seen in the 20th century. I want to thank everyone for listening in today. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it like I did. Um, I want to thank my friends from Tito's Vodka. They have two programs going on right now. Some awesome cool prizes. I've added on the QR codes up there, so take advantage of them. And once again, guys, like and subscribe. Send me a comment. Doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. I'm all for it. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Peace!